John George is crazy. You know why? Because he believes that in the impossible. He thinks that he can come into a community, uh, you know, with a group of people, dedicated community people, and clean it up and make it better. You know, that's insane. Uh, but he's doing it every single day. And, you know, who wants to do the possible? You know, he's, he's accomplishing the impossible at Motor City Black Busters, and we thank God for him. All I really want is, is, is just a regular, clean, decent neighborhood. It's very conservative, quite frankly. But you have to, I found that you have to be very radical in Detroit to have a conservative community. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you line up 50 people with sledgehammers and tear down a crack house, that's pretty radical. You know, you neither destroy or you build. It's, it's like no in between, you know. And sometimes you have to destroy to build. Oh, and then you clean up. So, <laughs> but. Um, you know, the reaction, man, is mainly what I've always wanted to give people is inspiration. Chaz came to me and said he wanted to do murals and teach kids. And I said, well, you know what, I got paint and walls. I got a lot of volunteers. Let's get to work. John George and Motor City Bike Busters believed in what I was doing. I'd run around for about four years with a proposal after everybody said, you need to put together all your ideas in writing in order to get somebody to believe in it. So even after I put it in writing, it took another four years to connect with somebody that understood and got it. The Artist Village is a place to nurture and cultivate creativity and creative people. Um, it's a place in the city that's uh, much needed. Detroit is like a blank canvas. So what I intend to do is just have a place where all these artists can gather together, and create different projects, and ultimately go out throughout the city to spread the creative movement. We do poetry. We do jazz, we do murals, we do urban gardening, we do demolition, we do, you know, you name it. But it's all part of the same goal and mission to stabilize and revitalize the city. So when we get paint and resources and materials, we're ecstatic because we need all of these things and we can't afford to buy them. So if corporate America and others are willing to give them to us, we're willing to take them. Over the years, we've had literally thousands of people, uh, rich and poor, black and white, uh, city, suburban, young and old, uh, threaten to help us. You know, some people do, some people don't. So what I've tried to do is find people that have the heart and the talent and the spirit and the attitude and empower them to do what they do and then somehow incorporate it into what we do. And if we're trying to stabilize, revitalize, repopulate, and beautify the city of Detroit, you gotta have murals, you gotta have affordable housing, you gotta tear down crack houses, you gotta help little old ladies across the street. You gotta do all of these things to make a better Detroit. So when we empower people to do what they do best, we get the best out of them without having to encourage them every day because it's what they want to do anyway. The wall may have a racist past, but it's also a part of Detroit's history, and many in the neighborhood think it shouldn't be forgotten. The wall on Detroit's west side runs for half a mile from 8 Mile to Pembroke, through the backyards between Mendota and Burwood. Erected in 1940 by a white builder to separate a white subdivision from a black neighborhood off 8 Mile near Wyoming. Amy Lang from Fox 2 came to us and found out about the Burwood Wall, and she said when she found out about the wall, she thought of doing a mural on it. And when she thought about doing a mural, the first person she thought about was me. Glenn Wilson grew up with the wall in his backyard. He and others want to see that wall beautified. Part of it runs through the Alfonso Wells Memorial Park, and people have tried in the past to paint it. But more could be done. The problem solvers have contacted Motor City Blightbusters. Their resident artist, Chaz Miller, is responsible for fantastic murals appearing all over the old Redford area. With the permission of the city and the help of the surrounding community, they're offering their help. I never knew this was here, and even to just to bring awareness about our history and our culture and turning something again that was negative into something that was positive. Uh, we'd like to work with Greening Detroit and others to not only clean up the park, but maybe plant some trees, you know, maybe get a playscape installed, uh, and of course work with Chaz and, and the kids to uh, make a mural that we can all appreciate. But there was a section of the wall that had been destroyed and needed to be rebuilt. Um, I had a guy promise on three separate occasions, I couldn't even get a quote let alone a price, I mean, or you know, someone to come out and tell me how much, when and where. It, it's just a lot to put everything together. Um, when you're working with no money, you know, you're working with limited resources, um, but somehow, some way, the Lord always placed those people with us that's supposed to do that part. And the fact that the wall needed to be repaired, needed to be done, we knew we had a busy summer ahead of us, 
we wanted to really get that project started and wanted to get it going. So the bottom line is we just can't wait on other people. So by fortunately, we have a lot of talent and we got a lot of um, resources. We keep our faith and then that's what happens is that we those people come to us as supposed to be that part of that project. I, I actually ran into Mr. White three days before I had to have that wall built. I took him out to the wall, I explained what we were doing, and he said, I'm in, because he understood. He, see, some people just get it, and others, you can talk to them until you're dead, and they'll never get it. Mr. White was one, Derek White was one, that understood what it is that we're trying to do. We're trying to heal this community and bring people together, and the Burwood Wall Project did that. Y'all ready to go to work? It is a massive project, cleaning up an entire neighborhood, one that will take more than 300 people and all day to complete. Burgess and Finkel in the heart of Brightmore, one of the hardest hit communities in Detroit. We went to that neighborhood with Alicia and myself and I was actually going to look at a house that someone wanted to donate to us. And as I drove through this neighborhood, the street was flooded, there was abandoned stuff everywhere. And I look over and there's this guy with a 12-year-old daughter and his wife trying to build this house in the middle. And people call me crazy. This guy's absolutely certifiably nuts. He's building a, gotta be a 2,000 square foot house in the middle of hell. It was like, you know, Katrina with fire. There was 10 houses on that block burnt to a crisp. And I was gonna speed through this neighborhood. It was just too far gone. I was tired, I was beat, I was broke. And Alicia said, what are you doing? I said, I'm leaving. She said, no you aren't, you gotta get out and help that guy. So it wasn't, again, it wasn't even my idea, it was her idea. But I'm glad that we did. Logan's a wonderful spirit, uh, a great uh, family man trying to build a home uh, for his family. And as you know, we went out with Access and others and were able to uh, move that project forward. We've got all the negative energy away from his home we showed up with almost you know 250 people and just blew them away and uh, I think we really uh, you know talk about a hometown welcome we, we really welcomed them to the community and now he feels a part of it and every time I see him he's got that crazy smile on his face Documentation is everything. I mean, you know, again, to see is to believe, and what better way to capture what the artist village is all about than through film. And again, man, it's just the fact that somebody's willing to take that time out is inspiring to me to work even harder. That, um, you know, because all you guys are very busy. You got a lot of other things you could be doing other than sitting here filming this. So it just really adds value to what I'm doing. And again, the fact that um, somebody is recognizing what I'm doing because so, for so long, I mean, again, and it's a rough, 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 rough road in Detroit for artists. I'm a misfit. Most people I know that are involved with this project are a misfit. We really don't quite fit in anywhere else. But you bring these misfits together and they believe, like I believe, that we can change the world. We can help kids and seniors and people. And, uh, you know, the mayor likes to tease and say I'm crazy. You know, John George believes in the impossible. But you know what? He's right. I do. And once you convince yourself to believe in the impossible, anything's possible. So with that being said, um, you know, is it possible for us to have a full uh, length uh, feature that's going to be incredible and go worldwide? Of course it is. It's exactly what we need. And uh, we'll, we'll welcome it.